I'm responding to Laura's claim that Proposition 2 is going to negatively affect California's economy. I will do so by refuting her three secondary claims. One, that a large part of the U.S. income comes from California agriculture. Two, that the cost of remodeling the farms will lead to outsourcing. And three, that the new conditions are prone to unsanitary food. I will begin with secondary claim one, which is that a large part of the U.S. income comes from California agriculture. To show how vital California agriculture is to the rest of the country, Laura cited that the state provides half of our national egg supply. She then suggests that if farmers switch to a less confined <coughs> animal housing system, there will be an increased production cost of 20%, resulting in farmers relocating to other states uh, where restrictions do not apply. Now, although Laura is correct that there will be an increase in production cost, she uses faulty reasoning and insufficient evidence to support the rest of her claim. For reasoning, she relies on heavily on the egg statistic as a direct link between California farm production and the U.S. economy. However, according to Dan Sumner, a UC Davis agriculture economist, the actual contribution California has on national egg production is only 6%, not half. This casts doubt on the only connection she had between her subpoints and the secondary claim. In addition, she then presents no factual evidence that California farmers intend on leaving the state. In contrast, if we observe how farmers responded to Proposition 204, the 2006 Arizona equivalent of Proposition 2, we realize her assumption is flawed. Because according to Paul Shapiro, a chief authority of farm animal welfare from the Humane Society, Arizona pork and veal farmers made apocalyptic predictions about uh, continued production in the state if Proposition 204 passed. However, when Arizona citizens approved the measure, none of these threatening farmers actually abandoned their farms. Instead, they made the adjustments, and then they just continued the work and abated. I now respond to her second secondary claim, which is that the cost of remodeling the farms will lead to outsourcing. Laura maintains that the, the result of $50 million being spent to adjust flocks and facilities will cause farmers to increase the price of eggs significantly higher than one cent per egg, which is an estimation that most Proposition 2 supporters use. She then claims that farmers will need to hire more labor forces to maintain these. Uh, what Laura doesn't tell you is that Proposition 2 gives farmers until 2015 to comply with these changes, which means that the $50 million for innovations can be spread, o spread over a six-year period at 16.6% .6 per year, and that softens the financial blow on farmers. In addition, the transition from caged chickens to free-range birds uh, would have be really easy to do because um, laying flocks only last for two years. So it gives farmers three generations to adapt to the new um, farming methods. Laura also provides no data regarding how much egg prices will have to increase when compared to the forecasted price of a penny egg. And according to Pamela Ken Rice's article, uh, there will actually be no effect on consumer finances because the lack of caged eggs in California will be supplemented by eggs imported from other states. Uh, I also have a problem with the reasoning she gave in trying to connect the cost of remodeling to the need to hire more workers because um, she shows no causality in the claim. Uh, instead, she uh, doesn't provide any information supplying to that. She actually provides more information that suggests that the debunked egg price theory is actually the true effect and that um, the outsourcing would be attributed more to the cost. Now, for her final claim, which is, or final, um, the third secondary claim, which is that the new conditions are prone to unsanitary food, she claimed that free range farms are less sanitary than factory farms, and then contended that due to declining egg production, California will be forced to purchase eggs out of state and in Mexico where food standards are different. Now, Laura does not supply any factual evidence that the sanitation of free range farms uh, could actually affect the market. But in contrast, there are plenty of examples where unsanitary conditions in factory farms can. If you consider the swine and avian flu epidemics, um, for one thing, because reports were made by the Pew Commission on industrial farm animal production, and they warned that confined animal feeding operations had the potential of breeding new strains of bird and pig influenza. Uh, and they even went as far as to predict the current outbreak a year in advance. And as a result of fear caused by this outbreak, Many consumers have stopped buying products associated with factory-produced pigs and chickens, um, which in turn directly affects the economy. 
Um, she also has an exaggeration over how food safety is jeopardized because of um, reliance on Mexico's eggs. Because according to the University of California Agriculture Issue Center, the total reliance on egg and Canada Mex and Me or reliance on eggs in Canada and Mexico is unlikely unless there is a nationwide policy change similar to Proposition 2. In addition, all edible products, including eggs, are subjected to the same FDA standards of food safety no matter where they originate from. According to Chapter 15 of the Food and Drug Administration Egg Inspection Code, no state or local jurisdiction may require the use of standards of quality which are in addition to or different from the official FDA standards. In conclusion, despite making a very convincing argument, Laura's data breaks down after being correctly analyzed. This is due to her lack of factual evidence throughout the presentation, coupled with incorrect statistical evidence and faulty causality examples in more than one of her secondary claims. All of these issues cast doubt on the validity of Laura's claim. Thank you. All right, you labeled the claims very clearly. It was easy to follow. The signpost on the first point was uh, straightforward. You've got a good challenge on the reasoning. You've got some evidence that suggests that it's not nearly as significant as uh, the advocate suggested, and uh, you provide some alternative quantification. You challenge the uh, lack of evidence on a particular point, and you've got good count. You've got a good counterexample with uh, Arizona's Proposition 204. Again, clear signposting on the second point. Your analysis of costs, I thought, was. Uh, very clear in contrast to the argument that was presented by the advocate, so I think you did a good job explaining it. You do need the data and a little bit more explanation on the information about the laying flocks and their turnover over a couple of years. Uh, I understood it a little bit more because we talked about it, yeah. but uh, in, I think in the context of the argument in here, uh, it wasn't quite as clear. Um, and then the notion that imports from other states would mitigate any impact that would have on the state here, I thought that was pretty clear. You've got a challenge on causality I, that I thought was also a little bit unclear. A good transition on the third point, very easy to follow. Uh, again, challenge on a lack of evidence and you had good counterclaims on factory farming issues and health issues and then you had the FDA standards as a backup there so I thought you had a very solid argument on that point. Alright, thank you.